Heather Quick with Florida Women's Law Group and as promised from our video last week, we are still talking about living with a narcissist, divorcing a narcissist, and today we have our expert, Dr. Mercedes McGowan, who is a, a psychologist with, I could go on, it would take the whole video with all of her degrees and certifications and expertise. She is somebody that we refer pretty much all of our clients to, um, and is definitely a, um, an expert in this field and a wonderful resource. So Mercedes, thank you for coming thank you. today. Happy to be here. And um, as I, we talked a little bit before, you know, it's an issue a lot of women come to us with, and I imagine for you as well. I see it in my practice very often. So I was hoping you could, because when we talked last week, it was myself and Stacy Drotty, my managing attorney, and we were just talking about what happens in the divorce process. But of course, um, I think it's really important to understand from the mental health aspect because I think we'll have a lot of women watching who you know, are in this situation, living with um, you know, a man who probably has these tendencies once right. you describe what it is. Then we'll talk about, you know, if you're trying to make it work, some maybe some techniques and tips you can give, and then of course, what happens in the divorce. What happens, unfortunately, yeah. if it doesn't work out. So basically, narcissist, there's, there's a spectrum. There's narcissistic personality disorder, which is a diagnosis, but there are also, you know, it, within the spectrum, there are certain people that are have narcissistic personality tendencies. So you kind of have to know what, what you're dealing with along the spectrum. The other thing that, you, that we know through the research that that is a diagnosis that is heavily um, more diagnosed in men than women, almost two to one. I, know, I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Almost two to one diagnosis of, of men over women in narcissistic personality disorder. The traits that you see in someone with either narcissistic traits or narcissistic personality disorder is um, a sense of grandiosity, a sense of self importance, um, either fantasies of or expecting that kind of treatment, uh, expecting special treatment at all times, and then accompanied with just not, not only that grandiosity. Uh, a need for uh, attention, and then the final portion of it is a lack of empathy of others, a lack of empathy of what those personality traits, what that need for attention does to uh, the people around them. So obviously making it very difficult if you're in a marriage relationship with somebody who exhibits those traits. Right, very difficult. And the thing about what, what we found with a lot of these uh, people, men, in particular, or women with narcissistic trait, personality traits, is in the beginning they can be tremendously charming. That grandiosity is, it can be very exciting, there can be uh, a lot of you know, whining and dining and excitement, and the partner comes along for the ride and it can be all very shiny and sparkly and wonderful, mm -hmm. as long as the partner, the spouse, um, maintains that uh, admiration for the partner continues to inflate that sense of grandiosity. What ends up taking a toll over time is when there's a lack of reciprocity and lack of understanding for, you know, that, that empathy for the toll it takes on the other partner. Yeah, I can see that and I would imagine, I mean, we see it on my side, which I think is at the end of the spectrum once it reaches divorce, but one of the things when, let's say a woman's watching this and thinking, I really am not ready for divorce yet, but what do I do? How, how can I maybe, can I repair it? Can I change it or live with it? I don't know. Right. What would you advise? Well, it depends, it depends on where the partner is in the spectrum on the level of personality disorder because on the extreme end of the personality disorder of narcissism, it can go into some pretty significant emotional abuse, abusiveness, because of that lack of empathy and the need for the admiration. Now, if you've got someone who has some narcissistic traits, uh, the, you have to understand where they're coming from. These people need admiration. They need to feel important. They need to feel supported. And that has to be sort of the dynamic in the relationship in order to maintain the relationship. And does there have to be with that, I want to touch on both, but that need, can they be supportive back? Like, do you think, or does it tend to have to be a little uneven? In general, it tends to have to be uneven. However, as long as the partner is meeting that narcissistic need to feel okay. important, that partner is also elevated to their level. Because part of that dynamic is also, I need everyone around me to be special. I am special, so I'm mm -hmm. surrounded by special people. So while you're in the, um, 
honeymoon phase or in the positive phase of the relationship, it can be, again, very exciting and very charming to mm -hmm. be the partner of someone who's narcissistic because you, you are part of that special world and you're brought into that. It's when those needs are no longer being met that mm -hmm. there's the, the, the fall from grace. Right, so to right. say, so to speak. And then probably where we'll see, or you see what you're talking about, the emotional abuse. What does that look like? Because I know, um, like as an example, my experience, sometimes I, we will have conversations with women and, you know, obviously it's difficult, but they're sharing with us what's going on. And from our perspective, even though it's not therapeutic, it sometimes I say, well, you know, that's not normal. Right. And I mean, and I know normal, like, is a wide range, but there are some things where you're like, I think sometimes they're so in it, they might not recognize right. it because they've been maybe so beat down and right. so used to You're not supposed to, to feel that way right. in your marriage. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. absolutely. So there is that, that level of emotional abuse because you're either on the pedestal next to the partner or you're devalued, you're not as special as they are, you're not meeting their needs so you're not, um, you're not their equal and there's a mm -hmm. continual sort of putting down. Tell me if this is a good example. You know, they get married, but then have children, and life happens, and, and we all age. Right. <laughs> and we all do whatever we can to look better. But, you know, I know a lot of women come in, and their self-esteem is so hard because they're listening to that all the time, right. that they're not as pretty, they're not as skinny, they're not as, not, never Not as, enough. not as, right? right. yeah. And then the other part of the dynamic is having the children that a lot of time these narcissistic men can't tolerate the spouse's attention going to the children. They are no longer the number one the number one in the family. And that can be very difficult for the narcissistic personality to tolerate. How does it tend to affect the children in those kind of situations um, that you've seen? It depends because one dynamic can be of the narcissistic, I'm gonna say father, okay. um, yeah. uh, because that's sort of statistically more likely, um, is the sort of the, fun, the, the Disneyland, the fun, the adventure, the mm -hmm. charm, and all of that. So the children uh, can feed into that, and that can be a very exciting thing. The flip side is, is if there's, I've seen in, in several cases where if there's one child that doesn't fall into line with that adoration mm. of the father, then there will be the bullying and the, and the picking on one particular and then increasing the attention on the other children that are falling into line and feeding that narcissistic need. Those are good examples, I think, maybe for you know women to who are watching and maybe so in it. And they, and they I think they always, they tend to, they know deep down, right. like something's not right, but maybe that if they were coming to you for counseling or, you know, would there, have you, seen many men who will enter counseling. I guess it has to be as long as it makes them feel special, right? As long as they, <laughs> as long as they feel special and they're not overly challenged. Narcissistic yeah. personality disorder doesn't have a really great success rate in treatment mm -hmm. because uh, typically the psychologist or the therapist is, is uh, devalued when their specialness is challenged. Got it. Okay, so that's where and I've had cases like that where, you know, um, the clients say, well, we did try counseling, but then he didn't like the counselor, so we have to leave. And we're, we, you know, kind of are serial attenders of marriage counseling, trying to, at least one person's trying to make it work. Exactly. Last week we talked about divorce and divorcing a narcissist. And of course, that's where we see it the most um, as we represent women through divorce. What? would be some of those challenges and things that you would advise women to uh, deal with? Number one is getting an attorney who's good, who mm -hmm. knows how to deal with that personality. Mm -hmm. Because once, once there's going to be a divorce, uh, narcissistic personality types, it's, it, it's win or lose. Mm -hmm. So once, once the battle begins, oftentimes I find there's very little ability to rationally negotiate it, it, it's a, uh, they tend to have a scorched earth mentality. We'll spend $50,000 in legal fees to keep you from keeping the $25,000 car mm -hmm. because it's, it's a matter of win or lose. Those divorces tend to not be amicable. The, there tends to be a lot, the, I find that the, the women need to be prepared to not be overly reactive mm -hmm. because that, that's the number one trap that they can fall into is the narrative of I'm special, then turns into, I'm the victim, 
Even, no matter who asks for the divorce, right. that person yeah. uh, creates the narrative that they're the victim no matter what. And oftentimes the women are like, am I crazy? Like he had the affairs and wanted the divorce, mm -hmm. but he now becomes the victim. And um, and then there's the, the repeated motions and an ability to respond. They're above the, the, above the legal process. And I find a lot of these women end up falling into the trap of being overly reactive and then play into the narrative of that they are the crazy woman. Yes. So I work with a lot of these women very hard to keep them calm, not reacting to every single mm -hmm. accusation, not reacting to every single email, uh, and, and to stay calm, let your lawyer handle it for you, mm -hmm. keep the communications at a minimum. Uh, that, that's the key because they, they fall into that trap of feeding into this, the narrative that they are the crazy wife and he is the victim. Yes, we've seen that. And what I've seen a lot is um, my clients, will, they will come in and they believe, and I think it's just because that's what, what they want to believe, that, oh, we can work this out. And, um, and that's where generally, it, from our perspective, we say, you know, probably not. And you're going to lose a lot of time because, like you said, I the, the way I phrase it is like, they see it as a game, but that would agree with you, like the win or Absolutely. lose. Absolutely. And so they're like, the more they can have you kind of chasing your tail and thinking they're going to sign something or not, and and then six months have gone by and we really haven't made any progress because of their, and I know that it's a pure intent, like we should be able to resolve this right. and settle it, but the husband's playing it as a game. You know, the narcissistic husband is kind of treating it like a game on that standpoint. Absolutely, I find that. That those that when you're truly dealing with, with a narcissistic person, uh, the chances of, a, of an amicable settlement are, are, are pretty low. If they're approaching you in an amicable way, there's a yeah. reason behind it and mm -hmm. typically um, not in your best interest. Right, yeah, and one of the things that we do with the strategy is in our office we strategize to um, make them feel like they've won. I was like, at the end of the day, we got to keep it together and we know what they're going to want and we can do that effectively and we have, but if, you know, you got to kind of change the pattern a little bit is what I tell the women. They expect you to follow the same patterns right. that you have throughout marriage and I think that's whether it's narcissistic or not, just human. And so. If you stand up for yourself and you do get an attorney and you do, you know, change your behavior, it does shake things up a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're right, they need to feel like they won. Yes. And if you can find some way to make them win. Yeah. And sometimes it, when it when it gets so contentious, they prefer to go in front of the judge, even if they're going to lose, so that they can continue to be the victim because the unfair legal mm -hmm. system, they lost in the unfair legal system. Right, and um, right, they'd rather than you're right, then portray that then victim capitulate. and be seen as weak or like I agreed to something. Now, one of the things I know um, I'll hear from our, our, our women clients, I say, oh my gosh, he's so good though. He's gonna convince the judge, you know, and he's just like, he's gonna convince everybody. Is that, would be a typical in the personality? Absolutely, because that's what I was talking about. They tend to be very charming. Mm -hmm. that, that's why these women fell into the trap to begin with. Right. Um, so that again goes back to not only for the wife to be documenting, 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 mm -hmm. staying cool, and having the right attorney that can present the case that uh, these people who are, are willing to just lie in court with, yeah. with no empathy or, or uh, understanding of consequence. I think that that's what it is. They'll just, they feel like the, um, they will just lie. And they'll be so convincing. I know I've had some of our clients say like, oh my gosh, I almost believed them. Like if I really didn't know the truth, I, I was falling into right. that where I almost believed them, which I know makes it difficult because it's not always where there's a third party or other evidence to, right. to show differently. Um, for any women in this situation, what, um, you know, what would you recommend as far as, because you know, they, whether they're going to go through a divorce or not, I'm sure they need some tools and coping mechanisms so that they cannot, you know, you know, fall apart. Right. Inside. And 
I mean, I, I would recommend get a therapist that that is familiar with these dynamics, that's familiar with not only the narcissistic personality traits, but familiar with the divorce process. If you're going through the divorce, mm -hmm. that they can support you through this to, to teach you the tools to not be reactive, to be on top of, of what you need to do to not fall into those those patterns that, you, that have been created over the course of the marriage that right. they are going to push you into recreating. Yeah, and I know, as we know, in divorce, husband and wives, they all know your buttons. <laughs> I mean, you know, they know better than right. anyone else what's on both sides, you right. know, what's going to really get them, and that can make it that much more painful and difficult to get through. Right. I thank you so much for joining us thank today, you and thank you all for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe so that you'll know what videos are coming up next, and please comment, because we will take those comments and we'll either issue a written response or maybe a short video clip to you know answer any questions that you may have and of course you can always contact us at the Florida Women's Law Group go on our website we'll certainly connect you with Dr. McGowan and um, make sure that her information is available on this video as well so thank you so much thank you